but he maintains his unbeaten record and it's a treble for Willie Mullins and Ruby Walsh. See the Stars wins, a fourth guineas for Mick Kinnan. Good evening everybody, good morning, good afternoon. We are back with our third video in the series of the Cheltenham Festival previews and that being said we're of course on to day three, uh, the worst day of the week, I'm sure we can all agree. Um, although some of the best horses of the week, funnily enough. Uh, so we'll get straight into it. Um, we, of course, will be skipping over the handicaps and focusing on the graded races. So the first race of the day that we're going to be looking at is the Turner's Novice Chase. Current joint favourites, these are all non running no bet, of course. Bob Ollinger and Galopine de Champ, 5 to 4. Long Presse at 9 to 2. And then you've got horses like Brave Man's Game, Blue Lord, that won't be going there. Houghton Collier probably won't be going. And then you've got Jungle Boogie at 12s. Riviere de Tell, who probably won't be going. And as you can tell, it's uh, it's pretty much uh, one of those kind of <clears throat> betting heats where you're probably better to have a look at the exchange because half of these horses aren't going. Just looking at it, Bob Ollinger's 2.38. Galopina Champs is 2.8. So shortening in, looking like he's going to be coming here. Lom Presse is 9.2. Jeff, then he was two. He was, he was 2.74 earlier. Come on, the dream's alive. Up three miles. <laughs> Lom Presse 9.2, and then Gayard de Maynil is the next in the market. Mm -hmm. So fourth in the market at 33 to one. Um, yeah, we'll get on the just quick um, drop of the stats again. Uh, nine out of the 11, last 11 winners have been in the top three in the betting. So. Um, you know, statistically a good race for for those towards the top of the market. Eight out of the eleven. Run by Allen in twenty twenty one. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Eight out of the uh, eleven had a previous win in a Grade One or Two race. Uh, just on that, I didn't know that Shantry House was J. P. Manis's only winner last last festival. That was the only winner he had. So, really? That's strange, isn't it? Um, yeah, it was the only winner that J. P. Manis had last festival. I think was Shantry House. Smart. Um. 11 out of the 11 had run at least two times that season and um, 10 of the 11 were aged between 6 and 7 so a lot of to be honest a lot of the um, a lot of the stats suit the ones towards the top of the market and you know that's that's the way we're all going to be looking I guess yeah I think it, it's a novice chase isn't it so you'd expect them to all be of a similar age anyway exactly similar amount of, of course, runs and yeah. stuff like that um, right, who's going to kick us off? Who's backed Bob Ollinger? Neither of you. Me. Oh, you have, have you? Okay. No, I have. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, like six months. Uh, yeah, about four months ago, I backed him at nine to four, thinking it was like Christmas come early. But, no, no, I, I still do. I, I've i started to probably reluctantly accept now that Gallop and the Shump's going to turn up here. And I'm quite happy to be still on Bob Ollinger. I, I just, I, I think about this, well, I think about it most days, like, to be quite honest, but I just, I just don't see. He's a very good jumper, right? But two mile three, that's, in my opinion, that's inadequate for that's inadequate for for Bob, or for Galvin the Shumps. And Bob Ollinger, if Bob Ollinger can, well, apparently Gordon Elliott's in school last week, and apparently he's very, very good. So that gives me a glimmer of hope. But I, I just have, I'm off the opinion if if Bob Ollinger can get down to the last within the length or level with Galvin the Shumps, he's, he's got more, he's got more speed on. And he'll power up the hill. Yes, Galpin's going to stay on, but two mile three, I think we'll catch him out. To be quite honest, I, I think it's too short. Uh, this race as well, like there's going to be about five runners in it, so it's going to be it's going to be a funny old race. Like it's, but over two mile three, it's, it's more speed test than the stamina, as we know. I don't know why Willie's not going for the three miler, but that that was the debate in day two. I'm not getting into the game, but um, <laughs> I'm happy enough. And I think on the day, if I'm having if I'm having a good week, I'll probably have another bet in Bob. I think, I think Bob Bob's just going to beat him. I already do. Yeah, I'm. Uh, strangely enough, again, I'm agreeing with you. I think that the thing with Galloping de Champ is that we've seen him in these races against horses that you know, let's admit they're good horses, but they're not Bob Ollinger kind of level. So with Galloping over the shorter distance, he's kind of gotten away with still looking so impressive even if it's not been ideal for him. Uh, we all think he should step up, but, you know, if, if Willie sends him here, obviously he's seen something that nobody else has. Um, the one thing that Willie, I... Th the only, the only, Willie's problem is he thinks he's he, he's going to jump too quick for three miles. Because yeah. Paul, 
probably keep a high of them the last day because he kept on firing himself in the fences. Yeah, I think particularly running against Brave Man's game as well, who is obviously a, a very good jumper. Potentially that could be his thinking. I just think that, like you say, over that shorter distance when he's facing a horse like Bob Ollinger, he's just going to get outpaced come, coming around the turn. You saw the way that Rachel had to shake him up against uh, Capadano. And it took Bob Ollinger probably 100, 200 yards to get going. But then he absolutely rifled. So if you you think they're probably going to be taking each other but on. Even, even if you think of the Ballymore last year, he showed the Ballymore last year. Yeah, exactly. Once he yeah. Up that turn up up. Electric. Yeah, they're going to be taking has, each other on by the bottom of the hill. Turn up up? No. Because yeah. we're, we're the race that, like you say, is not going to have many runners. These two, in my opinion, are the only possible contenders. Um, but, well, I've got one more, but it probably isn't going to run. Um, so they're going to take each other on for probably two, three furlongs out at least. I just think it's going to get outpaced. Uh, the one I did want to give a shout for, or just before that, with um, Lom Presse, I think Venetia Williams was saying today that there's been a bug in the yard and a few of them are catching it. So I wouldn't be backing him without a non-runner, no bet. Um, what was the one I was going to talk about? Uh, Jungle, Jungle Boogie, Jungle Willie's Jungle horse. No, yeah, so Willie's horse, Jungle Boogie, hasn't run... He's run three times in three years, hasn't he? I think he, he came in January. He's probably not going to go. He's got four entries, but if he turned up here, um, <clears> I think he's the only one that could put it up to the other two. But based on the fact that he's probably not going to, um, I think... Hopefully, I mean, like we say, we'd get, a lot of people would have backed Gallopin for the longer race backed Bob here. Um, I haven't backed either of them for either, so I'm pretty happy if they both turn up because you want to see the best horses racing the best horses, and you don't want to have to wait another year to see them running against each other uh, you know, in, in whatever might turn up, the Gold Cup or what have you. Um, so yeah, Bob for me, and I'll stop rabbiting on. Dan, what do you think? Um, yeah, I'd sort of you know echo what he's saying. I mean, it's I get the point of, um, you know, wanting to see the best horses race against each other. It'll be, uh, <laughs> it'll certainly be interesting anyway. Depend on how many, um, how many runners we get. But um, you know, I, I, obviously, I think that Gallop and Deschamps is a is a future Gold Cup, Gold Cup horse. Um, I know people don't like the sort of stigma and sticking labels on him already, but from what I've seen, as we know, I'll, I'll beat the drum again. I, I think he could go in it this season. I, I just think he needs to be able to settle in behind horses because I think the the twice that he's ran, obviously he's gone to the front and just galloped away. Um, this is why I think it's a little bit strange that he's going to run here because, and it would sort of, you know, it wouldn't back up my theory of him being a Gold Cup horse because they're going to go from the front in this race. They they absolutely will not sit behind here. They will force the pace. They will make it into a non-stop, relentless gallop in the hope that. You know he can put his jump into to use and stretch out stamina and things. Um, Bob Ollinger's stamina is is never going to be a worry. The jumping maybe I think he's a solid jumper. I don't see anything really wrong with his jumping. Um, about who's going to you know I, what I'm saying about that is I think that it, I think in the three miler they could they could sort of just let Brave Man's game do the donkey work and sort of let Gallop and Deschamps sit behind a horse and sort of learn how to race that way. Whereas in this race, they're not going to be able to do that. You know, are they campaigning to be a Ryanair horse? Because at the end <laughs> of the day, what what are they doing with him in terms of if he runs in this race, he's going all out again. He's all out from the front. There's no way they're going to sit him behind. So... To me, that's not the sign of a Gold Cup horse because a Gold Cup horse, you want to train him to be able to sit behind horses and get into a rhythm. Here, he's going to go flat out from the front. It's going to be like an Alaho-esque type performance. And I, I I, have a funny feeling I know exactly what they're going to do. They're, they're going to run here in the Turners in 10 days' time. They're going to pull him back up to three miles of Punches Town at, at the end of the town. season. Yeah. yeah, there's a race at Punches Town. The monk fishing... Corey, yeah, Corey, that's right, Corey, that's I right, bet yeah. you, I hmm. bet you, my bottom dollar, he runs in that race after this year. Hmm. Well, that's the only way they can do it, isn't it? I mean, the only way yeah. that they'll. And he's, he's gonna, he's gonna come up. He's gonna turn up in some poxy hmm. race again. Now, to be sure, Bob <laughs> Ollinger actually might turn up in that race too. He's gonna turn up in some poxy race again. Just stick yeah. him in over three mile now, please. I mean, 
<laughs> I mean, the the in terms of who I think the winner would be, I mean, I, I'd probably change my mind every single hour, let alone every single day up to the festival. I have no idea who will win it. I think Bob Ollinger has the better turn of foot. I think he's better equipped to this sort of race. And I think he'll have everything in his favour if he can, you know, navigate the fences fine, which I think he will. Um, honestly, he'd be the one to beat. I'd have him favourite. Absolutely. That is one thing I would do. I would have Bob Ollinger favourite for this race um, over Gallop and Deschamps. Um, whether he would be favourite is another thing if they both turned up. Um, but I think the only way really Galloping can win it is if either Bob Ollinger's jumping doesn't stand up, or he's just got he's just too he, you know he's just better than him. I think that's the only way class will you know get him through this race. Yeah, he's I not going to out. Think he's not going to tactically well, outperform him. No. Is he? <laughs> no, he's not. I mean, Bob. Ollinger, but if he if he if he if he if he wins this here, he's got beers that I didn't think he had. I uh, I can see him winning it because I think he's that good, but that's the only reason I can see him winning it because I but don't. That's think what I mean. Is... I I just don't think he's got the gears for this. I think, yeah. as we say, he's more galloper, like one pace, but strong, like he's strong, strong. The thing is, but... I mean, the only like I say, the only way he he will beat him in terms of that is that he we sort of know that he'll jump very well. He's not all of a sudden going to go to pot. The only thing with Bob Ollinger is, will he be able to jump quick? But I thought he was put under a lot of pressure in terms of that race. The last day that Bob Ollinger ran in was a really smart race. That was a really, really clever race. People were crabbing him about his jumping and things. That was not a that was not an easy task. Do, just forget about his price for a minute, because I think people are looking at his price and just thinking, "Ah, oh, it's a dos race. You should win this." His price was ridiculous. Like it was, it was just insane how well, short Bob was. is a that very race. good horse. That was, a, that was that was a really, really top race. It's the same with Galloping Champs. His price last day was absolutely ridiculous. He was facing a Grade One winner for Christ's sake. And he was odds on. Like, he was one to two. Like, I mean, this is unbelievable. This is the talent of these two horses, that they are odds on against proper grade one performers. Capadano is a grade one performer, albeit over three miles. But he will run a good race in the in the Brown Advisory. We're, we're all agreeing on that. Mm. Um, you know, I, I just think that these are two exceptional novices, and I just it'll be a hell of a race. But I just think you know I, I honestly couldn't pick a winner in terms of that. But I'm obviously, as you know, I love Gallop and Deschamps. I'm firmly in his camp, you know. So that he'd be the one I'd side with. But it's very, you know, from a financial side, I could probably do a Bob Ollinger winning. But you know, I'd side <laughs> with Galloping just because I think he's amazing. And one thing I will say is it's really disappointing if um, if Lon Press doesn't make it. Really, really gutting for them. Hopefully, he'll be all right to get to Aintree. I would say I'd really doubt whether he's going to get make it now. You know, they've got, as you said, how, how long have we got? We've got a week. And, well, they've, you know, a they've week's said the, time to get a bug. He, yeah, they've said that the bug's in the to... yard, but the, mm. the top four or five horses that Venetia's got, including him, have avoided it so far. So he could dodge it, but yeah. like I say, with the, the close is, proximity that the they have... Is, Exactly, and they'll be they'll be separating the horses, obviously, and they you know they'll be keeping them away from them. But it's in the air, isn't it? And you wouldn't, you might not even know he's got it until he, you know, he might be running. He runs and then he runs really per race. It's just, it's really, yeah. really, honestly, I'm gutted for them because he is a top horse as well, and he would have an excellent chance in either race that he went in. I would not rule him out in this. I would have preferred him to go up to the three miler if Bob Ollinger and Galloping went in. I, th I honestly think he could win that three miler if they these two lined up here, but. Yeah, hopefully he can get there in, in one piece because honestly, if he does, he's an excellent jumper. It just and you know he's gone from the front. If he turns up here, that's a bit of a problem for Galloping. That is a little bit of a problem because he's a front runner. He's an exuberant runner. He's a really fast jumper. If he turns, if all three of them turn up, honestly, mate, just <laughs> just watch it. You don't need to bet a good on the race. race. I'll give it that. I, 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 I'm not betting anymore. I've won betting Bob and I'm before. I ain't betting yeah. anymore. Honestly, if you're going to bet on that race, but, yeah. um, you, you, you're, you're, um, you know, you're, you're out of your mind. <laughs> but let, Don't let's bet move, on it. Let's move, let, let's move on and talk about a proper banker. <laughs> proper banker. Of course, moving on to the Ryanair the chase and Alaho is, this is the golden ticket. currently four to six to win best price. Enega mains three to one, but he's definitely not going to be going here. Apple Tad's also not, neither is Shacken, and we're having another repeat where we're seeing a lot of horses that aren't going to run. So I'm just going to switch mm -hmm. over to the exchange. 
Second favourite on there is Sham Blue at 12.5, Janadil 15, Conflated and Eldorado Allen 17, and then a big jump Melon at 28. Go on then, Ben, kick us off. No, I don't need to kick us off. Oh, go on then. Um, <laughs> yeah, 10 out of the last 12 um, winners were in the top three in the betting, so again, it's a it's a good race for, for um, favourites. Nine out of 12 had run at least three times that season. That's not a tick. <laughs> um, eleven out of the twelve that ran within. Is. Eleven out of the twelve ran within seventy-seven days of the festival, um, and eleven out of the twelve were aged between yeah. seven and nine, and they were also uh, rated one hundred and sixty-two or higher. What 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 are you rated? Alaho, bloody hell, one seven four, maybe more. One seven four. I would mean at least That's at it. least one seven four, surely. We, we shouldn't really be spending much time on this because he wins. All he has to do is jump and get around and he wins. This is going to be the same again. There's not too many horses going to turn up. Whoever turns up isn't going to be good enough. <laughs> he wins and this is simple. He's, he's far too good. And I, I really, I really, you know, really, really hard racing with John Durkin. He could argue the steering, could have won that day. But I really like this winner, Fairless. I know Fakir made a bad mm. mistake at the first, but he battered him. He actually battered him. And Fakir comes and wins the, the, the Ascot chase. Like, it's good form, you know, like Melon is or not Melon, sorry, Alaho is the banker of the week. I mean he is bomb proof. He is literally bomb proof. All <laughs> he, he has to do is stay on his feet. All he has to do is stay on his feet and he wins. Yeah, um, I've been saying for I mean obviously anyway, if the he, he's gonna win he's gonna win for the boys. He is kinda of, honeysuckle, Alaho, she's gonna win. Liverpool is gonna be wrecked. <laughs> Absolutely wrecked. Anyway, I'm finished. Um, all the wins. <laughs> the, yeah, I mean, I said on the, um, the, the obviously not the preview videos, like the further out ones we did uh, last month, um, that Alaho was a ridiculous price. Um, I think it was five to four at the time, and I honestly could not believe my what my eyes at seeing that price. It was, I think I would referred it to a loan from the bank, to be honest, for <laughs> you know, a, a, lots of interest on it. Um, yeah, I, I just. He's been my banker of the week for, you know, for a long time. Um, I, I think he's. I'd have him over Honeysuckle. I'd have him over Shishkin. I think he should be the shortest of the three. I honestly think he's a. He's a. Honestly, could be a threes on on the day. Honestly, think he is just that far ahead of the competition. Um, Do I think you think the only thing stops run? him from being. No, I think I think that's he's gonna go one horse. Cup. Yeah, that would probably be the only horse in here that I think that might have a chance of beating him. I think he's going to go Gold Cup. I think Gordon Elliott wants... They're obviously, the owners, O'Leary's, want him to run in their race, but Gordon is really, really, really set on him going to Gold Cup. And I think he'll get his way. I think he'll go to the Gold Cup, yeah. So, um, I think that's obviously one to watch on the exchanges, absolutely. But I'd be yeah. surprised if Gordon didn't get his way. And to be honest, given he won... A, a grade one three miler last time out. Why not give him a crack in the Gold Cup? Are you going to beat Alaho? No. Like it, let's be honest, he isn't, is he? He's he's not going no, he's to not. beat Alaho. He's not that good. He's not a one seven four. That's the one. The only reason he turned up in the round. Not over sure. That's about the of it. Yeah, we saw the best from him. Stepped um, up in trip, so I, I can't really see them my, going short. I only have one worry. I only have one worry. Uh, my only worry is. And it's going to be on him this time, not Blackmore. That's my only worry. He won't be as bold as he was last year. Yeah. <laughs> he's, going to more cute. he's going to be trying to be more cute about it. If he gets well, him beat. Sure. Well, well I, 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 honestly, I, I'd, I'd even... I, I don't think it, even that can, can happen. I think he's absolute bomb-proof. And honestly, like you were saying, just to quickly run through, like... Enigamine isn't turning up. Aplutar isn't turning up. Shaq and Pessoir isn't turning up. Conflated, obviously, I've just said... Janadil will turn up. Um, he he is he definitely will turn up. And Chamblou, they're the two really. Um, the others are going to Gold Cup. Um, Fakiduderiz obviously will turn up. Tornado Flies going Gold Cup. El Dorado Allen's going Gold Cup. I wouldn't be so, so sure about Fakir. You know if they'd be smart enough by Fakir to keep him for the Melon Chase the entry, he's a very good chance for that again. You, you, the one horse that I would you know give a absolutely give a chance to is Chamblou in terms of. He's not going to be able to beat Alaho, but the performance he put up um, in Charlie the Hall, uh, in the Charlie Hall was was obviously going to be an outstanding performance, um, and it was probably the second best piece of form we've seen this season over this distance, apart from Alaho last time out. So, 
yeah, he could finish second. I mean, he'd need to improve just an unbelievable amount to be able to beat this horse. He is absolutely... Um, what is he like? The uh, Like the what? Honestly, he could probably run in the two-miler. He's that good. He, he could probably run in the two-miler. He could probably run in the Gold Cup. He'd probably run wherever they want. Like, yeah. He's that good. What about yeah. He's one of the best chasers, uh, so... Yeah, for me, I th absolutely I, th I, think, I think, you know, what's interesting now you saying Chambly. I think, you know, after, you know, that ball he had and all the last time, I think they'll run here. I don't expect to win, but I think they're going to run here mm -hmm. to, and they're going to try and just make sure he's absolutely spot on for entry. I think the Indies are a big day out. I think the run here review, just get them back in the course, get them a nice safe round, get them spot on. Andrew's going to be his day, I think, for yeah. Chambly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why they're not going the handicap route, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, George. I echo everything that you say Anything about else? Alaho. Um, I think Fakir Dudari is a good price each way at 12s. His Cheltenham form figures are one four two two over four runs, so he clearly likes it here. I think he's better than Janadil. I can't see what else is going to run. So I think he will. He's a very good each way bet at twelves. But apart from that, yep, yeah, all aboard the Alaho train. Right, we Stay will. Hurdle. say he'll be he'll be three to one on the day. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We will move swiftly on to if the. If you want to back him now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to back him at one to two, yeah. it's probably good value. You want to back him at you want to back him at four to six that he is now. Um, I would not put anybody off. <laughs> right, Stairs Hurdle. Current anti post, well, not anti post, non runner, no bet. Favourite is Flooring Porter at 7 to 2. Time Hill is 9 to 2. Champ is 5s. Classical <clears throat> Dream is 5s. Paisley Park, after his miraculous win, is 7s. Steering for Lons. He was 33 to 1 before he won that race. That's madness, isn't it? Yeah, he was probably about 66 to 1 after 10 seconds of that race, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievably, yeah. Asturian Flange and Royal Kahala are 10, Sporting John 12s, and then a big, big jump to Mellon at 28. So I told you to back at 60 to 1 a few weeks back. Um, I still don't think he's going to run, but you never know. Uh, right, Dan, kick us off. What have you got with your stats? Uh, 5 out of the last 12 were favourites. Um, 11 out of the last 12 were aged between 6 and 8. Nine out of the twelve were rated 156 or more, and eight out of the twelve had won on their last run before the festival. And does the horse that you fancy for the race fit any of those trends? Uh, I don't know whether he fits any, but he doesn't fit the uh, the last one I mentioned because he didn't <laughs> win on his last start. But um, oh, he already didn't win on the one before that either. I think that he. To be honest, what price is Time Hill now? Uh, nine to two. Is that non running no bet? Yeah. Oh, that's 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 not too bad actually. I thought he was shorter because that's about as short as I'd want him to be. Um, I think on the day you might get an each way price, and I think he's an absolute each way bet to nothing. As in, he is an absolute each way stone cold jobby because, you know, I don't see how he finishes. You'll get, you'll probably get four place again because there's going to be a big set of runners. Maybe bookies will try and push for. Um, it's the big race of the day, so if not, even in the first three, I'd be shocked. I'd be absolutely shocked if he's in the, out of the first three. You, you go through these horses, right? And people are just you. You read all, you listen to all these previews, and you, you know, you, you see everybody writing on the blogs and their posts and all this, um, pundits and the lot and. You know, th nobody's mentioned Time Hill. I I've barely ever heard him mentioned at all. The bookies clearly, uh, the bookies clearly mention him when they're talking in the traders. He's not the a office, trendy horse because he's is still he? second favourite. He's not. No, he's just not got the sexiness about him. He hasn't. No, he hasn't got that appeal. But you, you honestly, you go through the horses, right? Flower and Port, fair enough. He won this last year. He won. He won. He won it under an exceptional ride from the front by Danny Mullins, and it, and it was an exceptional ride. Um, then you go, and to be fair, you know, you look at the form, yes, you know, he won it, but he beat Sider Belay, who's going to run in the Potemps, he beat Paisley Park, who is so in and out, it's incredible, and he beat Beacon Edge, like, who isn't even over the hurdles anymore. So, it wasn't the greatest renewal in the world, this is certainly a better race this year, absolutely, that's guaranteed, 
yes, he's got a favourites chance because his performance the last day was was really good in the, in the light of him obviously losing the the amount of lengths um, on Classical Dream that he did, and he only got beat two lengths in the end. But he's so like dodgy this horse that you've got to remember as well. Last year there was no crowds. This year it's going to be buzzing. He's a very buzzy horse. People are going on about John Bond being buzzy. Well, this if you're going to back this lad, you're could totally contradicting yourself because this guy's an absolute nut job, right? He <laughs> needs to lead. They've even said that he needs to lead. So if he doesn't lead, what are you going to do? Like, you may as well chuck your slip in the bin because his connections have even said, if this guy doesn't get a lead, he's, he's not having any of it. He just isn't happy. And do you reckon they're going to give him an easy lead like they did last season? No chance. Honestly, I think there's reasons to take him on even though he's last year's winner. And, to be fair, it's exceptionally hard to win this race back-to-back -back at the minute. You know, not many ho horses aren't doing it. Paisley Park was odds-on to win back-to-back -back and got beat by Liz Nagar Oscar, who was a 50-1 to one shot. And Big <laughs> well, that was SP. He, he, he had, like, a many hard attack class later in the whole leg. Yeah, but it just it's a hard race to win back-to-back. -back. Um, well, Florian Porter's going to win, so... Champ. Um, Big Bucks one, won four Dodge of them. Pop, like... Yeah, big books did, yeah, obviously. Um, <laughs> Lauren Porter's the next big box. I suppose like I say, I'm, not, the I'm not saying people win. can't, I'm just saying yeah. in, re in recent years, it's just proven very difficult for horses to to win it back-to-back. -back. You know, that's that's clear. Um, Champ, oh, like, you know, he looks so good when he beat Time Hill because, to be fair, he, he cruised into that long walk. Yes, he didn't beat him by far, but he was definitely the deserved winner. But look at him the last day. Paisley Park loses about 20 lengths on him and, and absolutely smashes him. Can you rely on him turning up? No. Classical dream. Yes, Willie has come out and said he did the wrong thing. And to be honest, we were saying that at the time, that he, he just ran him too close to that win at, um, over Floor and Porter at Leopard Town. I, I, yeah. I, I have a fear that that will leave a scar on my horse. Well, it could do, yeah. That's that's another thing. But the, the, another thing is, like, he, you know, he was beaten by, he was beaten 11 and a half lengths by a mare who might not even run in this race. And isn't even favourite for the mayor's race. Like, come on, lads. Like, come on. Where's the where's the form lines coming here? Where's the oh. sol solidity? And then you look at Time Hill, right? He goes over to Ortoy, gets smashed. Heavy ground, like a pigsty. Married man's gallop, France, right? They, they I could keep up with them for most of it until the last three furlongs because <laughs> they jog. They just walk, right? And then he gets smashed, comes back, and everybody's like, oh, he's done, forget about him. You know, he, he's not he, he's not back. Comes back, runs an absolute stonking race in the long walk. I thought that was an absolutely brilliant trial for this race. I thought he ran a great race and put and Philip Hobbs has put him behind. Honestly, I think he has an absolutely outstanding chance in this race. I thought he was so unlucky in that um in the Albert Bartlett. He should have won that race. That was a classy race, we've seen that. Um I, honestly, lads, I think he's. I honestly think he's one of the better British horses. If Britain's going to get a winner in the Grade Ones, he's about the best chance we've got. He's a, he's got an outstanding chance in here. Really, really good chance. And he's, still, he, he's the one I fear the most. He's still a he's younger horse as well. He's only eight, so it's. Uh, um, yeah, when you. That's what I mean. He's got he's got more improvement in him. Yeah, you got Paisley Park in and... place as well. Look at his performance in a bumper. Yeah, yeah, Paisley Park and Champ both ten. So he's, you tend to think with some of these horses that have been running against each other for the past few years, um, that they've been around for ages. But I suppose he is one of the younger ones. Um, well, he's one of, like you look at his performance in a bumper, right? Glancing Queen was fifth. We know she's a solid horse, right? And obviously she was getting weight. She was a mare, uh, a filly, uh, mare, sorry. Then you Abracadabra's in fourth. You know he's a Grade One winner, um, of a hurdles champion hurdle runner. You've got Blue Sari was second. Yes, he didn't go on to do much, but he was absolutely the the, the vibe around that horse for Willie Mullins was incredible, and obviously um, the you know Envoy Len was <laughs> absolute God's gift to, to <laughs> horse racing at that point, and he won it. Then you go to the Albert Bartlett Fury Road latest exhibition Monkfish were in front of him, and honestly he should have won that race. They were ten lengths ahead of Janadil, who we've just said is going to be running the Ryanair, you know, and could even place it another Grade One. His form is outstanding at Cheltenham. He, you know, it's there for itself. You know, I, honestly, I, I can see him going off like six to one on the day plus, and I just think that is. I'll be having a, a stonking each way bet. 
absolutely stonking each way bet, mate, because I think he's got an excellent chance of winning and I think he's guaranteed to be in first four. So if those bookies are off in four places, that wheelbarrow is getting out of the shed again and it's coming out and wheeling my <laughs> money must down. be rusty yeah, now. Well, it, well, you know, if, it, if it's already out for you may keep it. You may as well keep it in the living room, like. Exactly. I, 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 I agree with you. I think, I think time is a very good horse. I just, I don't know, there's something about Florian Porter. But after, after they run at Christmas, there's a, there's a part of me that's like, no, no. I thought he was a wee bit undercooked as well. I think Gravin Conrad maybe left a wee bit off him. And I asked him most, most every week, like, you know, they're not fully wound up until next week. This is, this is the be on, be on end all around season. I am telling you now, they will crucify Danny, Danny Mullins if he does not get the source out in front. I can tell you right now, unless, there's a false start or something. And they're going to let him, though. Yeah, the, all, the other it. people going to let him because it's somebody not going to go up and say we can't give him a free lead. Yeah, Obviously, but who will it be? Sacrifice your yeah. own chance yeah. of winning. Yeah, you might have to sacrifice your own chance of winning. Honestly, if I was Willie Mullins, I'd just I'd run Mellon to be the front runner against him. That's what I'd do. I know you want Mellon to to win it, but I'd run Mellon and just say <laughs> send Mellon out on the front and Classical Dream will come be, sit behind and get a pace to aim at. And just run him off his feet for him. I, I, I fully trust Danny Mullins to get this right. I, I think Danny Mullins is a severely underrated writer. Like a severely underrated writer. Oh yeah. I, I trust him to get the I trust him to get this spot on. And I, I genuinely think if he gets this right spot on, this horse wins. But if he doesn't get it in front, you're right, he's fucked. Like it's <laughs> you know, it's, it's curtains. If he doesn't get it in front. But I I I got him at five to one after after the race of Christmas. I'm only one bet on him five to one, and I'm happy with my five to one. But I, I totally, I, agree, I totally agree with what you say, Pay Mill. Uh, as do the, as do the other ones. I totally agree with every comment you say. I don't give much chance, and not that I don't give much chance, but I think, I think Time Hill, uh, and I'm, always, I'm obviously with Florian Porter, but I think Time Hill and Florian Porter have a better chance of winning this race than uh, Champ, Casey Park, and who's the other one you mentioned? Classical yeah, dream. Yeah, it was. I classical remember. dream. Yeah, classical dream. Yeah. Yeah, got a I, in the as you boys obviously already know, I backed Floor and Porter at nine to one just before, or a couple of weeks before he ran um, at Christmas. I was pretty happy with it, despite him not winning. Um, I think that on off the back of that, I he didn't you know, lose anything, did he? No, and I thought Danny Mullins won't make a stay make a price. I thought the ride on um, Classical Dream was brilliant. The fact that Floor and Porter got that close in the end, mm. um, it, it, it was a good ride. So. I can't complain with that. I won't go on too much about him because you boys have basically covered it. I like him. I think he'll get a soft lead. I don't... The the problem is I can't see something in there other than, like you say, if, if he chucks Mellon up there, I, don't, I can't see another horse that's going to lead without just giving up their own chance. So I, I can't see him doing that unless they chuck in a third or a fourth string somewhere. The one horse that I did just mm. want to pick up on um, that probably... <laughs> won't be mentioned in any, any preview nights is Thomas Darby uh, he, he obviously ran at Haydock a few weeks ago and hated mm. the heavy ground and eventually was pulled up I was reading uh, earlier before the race Ollie Murphy had said that he doesn't think he's going to like the ground so I think they knew at that point that that race was a bit of a just yeah, get him out shocker, there didn't he? yeah just give, give him a bit of a run just yeah, so it, I think yeah, it's just it can, one of those it can do, things. He can, can do more bad. He can do more bad than good. You know, letting them. Yeah, I think he probably said to him, "Look, give him a spin. If he doesn't like it, just pull him up." Because he, let's be honest, he probably needed a run, and there wasn't anything else suitable, so they had to get him out there. Um, yeah. Um. What was I saying? I can't remember. Anyway, um, oh, Thomas yeah, Darby. Yeah, Thomas Darby. Yeah. Um. Obviously, he's he was a what was the race he won at Newbury in November? He won the uh, yeah he won one of the, the, uh, the trials long, yeah. long distance something at Newbury in November. <clears throat> Absolutely pissed it. Yeah, it's just that's it, long distance. Yeah, and then he ran in the long walk. Um, obviously, that you were talking about a couple of minutes ago, and I went back and rewatched the race, and he sat in last, and the the top three were all prominent. He finished fourth. I think it was a pretty solid run. Um, looking at some of the horses that, of course, won't be going, um, we got was it four main contenders: Florin Porter, Classical Dream, Champ. Is Champ, Champ going to go? Paisley Park. Paisley Park. Time Hill. I suppose there's five of them. Um, I think fifty to one for Thomas Darby is a ridiculous price, considering the form 
over the last year and a half or so, he's always been up there with all of these horses. So I don't I don't see how he can be fifty to one. Of course, it's Ollie Murphy's and one of those trainers that's unfashionable again. If this horse was owned by Susanna Ritchie and trained by Willie Mullins, it would be twelve to one. Um, so I think fifty to one. Like you say, you on the day you're going to get four places. You might only get thirty threes with four places, but I still think that's a pretty decent each way bet. Just trying to pick something out. Um, but I'm on floor and porter at nine to one, and fairly happy with that. I'll just add one in there. Um, just one thing quickly on the pace that uh, Listergar Oscar, who obviously won it a few years ago, he was up on the pace last time, forcing it. That's the only worry you'd have if, if a horse like that is going to try and go for it. Um, I think that's probably about the only way you could win it, Listener Gar Oscar, because mm. he obviously won a really weak renewal, really, when he won it. Um, the other horse I will mention is um, I, I have absolutely no idea, and honestly, I think they probably won't go for this race, but Song for Someone's about 50 to 1. And he needs a trip. Like um, they, they think the absolute world of that horse. Like they, they think he is a really, really useful horse. He's only seven years old. Song for someone. I'm convinced at some point they're going to step him up and trip. Um, I think he's ran at about two and a half, something like that. If you look at this season, his runs over two miles. He just, he just hasn't got the pace. He's just always out of his comfort zone. He's always running on at the finish. Honestly, he's done well to get to 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 some of the ho- get near some of the horses he's been running uh, against, and obviously one of them that he finished second to was Buzz, who was the anti post favourite for this before. Obviously, he got injured, unfortunately for Nicky Henderson. You know, he ran him really close um, at Ascot. I say really close, he didn't, but he ran a great race um, of a two mile near enough two mile four, I think it was. And um, you know, I just think this step up in trip at some point is worth a try and you know why not try it in the in the, in the big one why not if you're ever going to find out why not try it here and if they have no other race for him I, i'd send him here and just try him in the in the three miler um uh, he's too high in the handicap really to be winning anything like that um you know like the coral cup or anything he might go for that but he's a bit high in the weights um but he, you know if he does turn up for a race like the coral cup i'd be definitely be interested in him because he's classy enough to be able to carry a weight but if he turned up here, yeah, he's you know there's worse fifty to one. Obviously, you've just put one up, but there's there's worse fifty to one shots. Um, and yeah, I just think he could run a race. You never know. Yeah. Cool. Right, we will move swiftly on <laughs> to the last race that we're going to cover today. Shorter, slightly shorter video than normal, as there's only four races to cover, and it is one of my favourite races of the whole week, which a lot of people probably won't agree. The Mayor's Novices Hurdle. Um, so a quick run through of the betting. Brandy Love is current favourite at eleven to four. Dino Blue is three to one. Party Central has seen some support in recent days at six to one. LA Bell is eight to one, although they said last week that they're skipping for Aintree. Grangie is eight to one along with Impervious. Love Envoy is fourteens. And then it is twenty to one bar those. I will kick us off this time around, but first of all, um, tell me a few stats so I can rule out all of my selections. <laughs> well, the, uh, the obviously there's only been six renewals, so um, we can only go off that, so I'll just be quick. Uh, the five out of the last six with top three in the betting, obviously Mill- Willie Mullins benefit, if you like. The uh, exception to that was Eglantine de Soy that won it in 2019. She was 50-1. Daryl. Um, Still wasn't she? Yeah. Six so out of the last it? six um, were. Well, that wasn't that Feely? No, um, yeah, it was. Yeah, oh, no, Feely. Yeah, yeah, of course it was, yeah. Um, Dow Jacob won it on Constista. Um, oh, six yeah. out of six were aged between five and six. And four out of the last six were rated uh, 141 or higher. Ooh. Okay. So. Obviously, with that's your lot. Go on, George. Let's see. It's your one of your favourite races. <laughs> I love this race, and it, again, this year is just... selection. I don't know why <laughs> I like it. Maybe it's uh... <laughs> well, you go back. No, but... Neither do I, to be honest. We'll go back the last few mindful. years. When obviously last year, when Tell Me Something <laughs> Girl won, Rachel was having one of those weeks where it's just like you'd wanted her to win everything. When Concertista to one, it was entertaining. Yeah, it when Eglantine to so- came it, yeah. came through right at the end and won at fifties, yeah. Lorena, let's dance. Was it Limony the year before? That's a brilliant. I love this race. I, 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I really love his race. <laughs> um, obviously, we've got a big absence in Allegory Devassi after she sustained a hock fracture, which I learn is sort of halfway up the leg, and it's actually their ankle, which is why it bends the other way. Anyway, um, <laughs> enough about that. Um, the horse that I fancy in the race is one of Willie Mullins's that we've obviously just mentioned there, and it's Dino Blue. Hey. <laughs> she was in- incredible on, on debut. I think she won by 14 or 15 lengths, eased in the end. Um, the second and third in that race went to a, another novice at Limerick. The second was odds on. I think it's about eight to eleven, and she ended up falling two out. And the third, so the the third in Dino Blue's race, ended up winning that race by fourteen lengths. So the form looks like it's. Me lighthouse. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I wonder how that is pronounced. <laughs> if that is a Jamaican horse, you never know. I know, yeah. It's very strange, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> She's obviously been really well supported <laughs> since then for this race, um, even in recent weeks, um, coming all the way in. They currently sit on the, the bet for exchange at 4.2 Brandy Love and 4.4 Dino Blue. Um, I just thought that that debut, although she's only run once, was impressive enough to justify the price that she is. I've backed her at 7-2, to two, so she's probably... Well, I can't remember what I said she was now. I've just closed the page. 4.4. Yeah, 4.4. So minus your commission, she's just under 7 to 2. But yeah, that I can't say too much more about her because obviously she's only run once and it's one of those ones where, you know, we might be seeing a future Mayor's Hurdle winner here. Um, we, we They tend to run pretty well afterwards. Um, Brandy Love has obviously got so much mm-hmm. talent as we know. The fact that she did dive so far left when she was tied at the end of her race puts me off. I think she might even be, you know, I, I would even, give her. I don't even know she was tired. I think she might be a bit just a bit of an other leg. Like. Yeah, she she looked. That there's going left, um, and there's going left, and obviously she's jumped left and veered left as she's landed. So whether she's just seen something in the stand or or, or what. You don't know. The thing that I was saying to you boys earlier that would worry me is that obviously the hurdles are going to be coming right up the rail on the stand side. Um, she's got quite a way that she can drift over across to the poor seats <laughs> on the far side there. So that if, if they were on the chase course, I think you might be more inclined to back her. But just because of that, I, I think that when you're back in... You know, when you've got two horses at the same price, you're looking for little things that you think might give one the edge. Um, and to, to me, that gives Dino Blue the edge. Garangi, they're probably wow. one of the other prominent ones in the market, for me, is not quite up to the level. In the Solarina, when she fell two out, I think she was already beaten anyway. Um, well beat, I, well beat. Yeah, and I, <laughs> and I don't think the rest are on par with, with those top two. The top two are horses that could run in championship races against the boys in a couple of years i don't think the rest are um so from that point of view it's dino blue for me um but i'll pass it over to one of you boys oh, i i i just i really really like brandy love i, I just can't i just can't keep on getting and, and i know like there's, there's a big fear with betting her here that she could go a wall again and that could just ruin her <laughs> chance but I would just want to know how how far she would have been allegory to Vassy by if she stayed straight. I think she would have won. After, I don't think it would have been a long way. I don't I think, think it would have been would, more than a few lengths. I think it would have been six or seven easy. I just think she was going so easy. And then, do you know, she lost about 15, 20 lengths whenever she veered left. And they could beat with three and a half lengths. It's a... Uh, it's good goal, you know. It was, it was, she she ran really, really well. well I mean, for, she for recovered, she staying on really strongly. Yeah, yeah, for yeah the she, she recovered from the second last mm. of the line. She done really, really, really well. I just, I just, I know it's a bit like Florian Porter. You're taking a chance, and he gets his, gets a lead, or whatever. I'm taking a chance of she can avoid going a bit mad and jinking her left. And if she stays straight, she wins. I'm convinced. If she stays straight, she wins. 
I think she's a very, very, very talented horse. Very, very talented horse. Dan? If she wins, if she stays red. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, I was on Allegory de Vassi for this and I thought she had a really good chance. I thought she was very professional. That naturally then put me towards Brandy Love, um, given, you know, what you've just said, what you've just outlined. Yeah, I'm the same. I hope she doesn't jump left. I'd be less um, worried about her doing that here. Oh, yeah, um, I'm the same. I, I'd be less I worried. understand what... Yeah, I understand what George is saying. You know, I fully take that on board. I get that. Um, but I'd be far less... She's, she's going to have far less chance to do it here. Um, and if she is... Sw you're swinging a lot. You you know, like... You, you are sort of moving left-handed a lot. So that might stop her doing that. You know, making her want to go that way. Um, if that makes sense. But we'll see, won't we? Uh, she is quite short, given that, that it, there is that factor in there. Um... Dino Blue, obviously, you know, she's the only thing I, I would say about her is she's only ran once, so she's not got a lot of experience moving mm. to Cheltenham. Um, that would put me off, um, her, especially at the price she is. Party Central, fair enough, you know, she's coming for a bit of money, but she's only done it in um, handicap company so far. I don't really like that stepping up into graded races, especially when you come in to what is going to be the best mayor's novice of the season. I, I I think your lads are a bit quick there on Grangey. I, I I think she's um I think she's got a chance, you know, because she you, you have to bear in mind that on on the form, um, Grangey beat uh, Party Central and Brandy Love. She battered Brandy Love. She only just beat Party Central. Um, in that in the, in, the bu in the bumper last season. That's right. Yeah. So she was eighteen to one that day, but. You know, and it wasn't exactly expected, but she won fair and square, and she went and followed up in a Grade Three flat race as well. She's looked fairly, you know, decent of her hurdles, and uh, you know, I have to say she was beaten last time. She probably wouldn't have won, but you know, she when she fell, she she'd only just come under the drive a bit, and she clearly, you know, Cheltenham um, it is a is a, a venue that's going to suit her. It, it has before. She finished sixth in the bumper last year. Um, I thought it was a very respectable run. Behind what are you know what the top two were outstanding bump horses, um, so Gerhard and and Kill Crook, and the rest it weren't that bad. You know you had some good horses in behind there. Uh, I think La Bell was in there as well. So, you know like, yeah, uh, you know, I, I. What price is she? She's got to be each way, isn't she? Uh... You know, if you can get eight to one or something, I, I think that's very fair because now that Allegri de Vassi's out of it. Yeah, I think it was. I think she'd have probably finished third that day. Uh, so I think she'd have finished third behind Brandy Love and Allegory de Vassi. And now she's Allegory de Vassi's out. She's only got Brandy Love to worry about in that in, in terms of that race. And like I say, she one. beat her of a, uh, on the flat. Yeah, I'll back her on the day. I won't back her now, but I'll back mm. her on the day. I've got Brandy Love already. Um, and I'll back Grangy on the day each way because I think she's got a, a, you know, I think she's got a fair chance. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, good stuff. Right, it seems like we've been really quick, but we're still up at 47 minutes, so we'll wrap this up fairly swiftly. Uh, we'll just run through each race with our selection, um, and then we'll go for a best bet of the day. So Turner's Novice Chase, um, I'll kick us off. Uh, I forgot what I said, <laughs> Bob Ollinger. I think Bob Ollinger will win. Yeah, me too, Bob Ollinger. Um, Gallop into Shanks. The Ryanair Chase, I think... I think that Alaho will win, of course, but I think Faka Dudery at 12 to 1 is a very fair each way price. Will Barrow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alaho, absolutely. <laughs> Stayers Hurdle. Um, I'm on floor and Porter at 9s, but I will be having a bet on Thomas Darby at 50 to 1 each way because I think that is probably double the price that it should be. <clears throat> floor and Porter? <laughs> um. Yeah, Time Hill, absolutely, he's got a solid chance. And, uh, yeah, I'd put a song for someone if he did run at 50s, but Time Hill is solid. Yeah, um, Mayor's Novice, of course, we've just gone over. That's Dino Blue for me. One of the most searched women on the internet, Brandy Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brandy Love for the win, but uh, for each way punters, Grangy is, uh, she's got a good each one chance. Gosh, she's got to be getting on now, the old Brandy Love. Anyway, right. Um, <laughs> best bet of the day. We will start off with you, Dan. Alaho, absolutely. Ben. Alaho. Alaho. Okay. Well, I don't want to copy you, so I think Thomas Darby each way, fifty to one, um, is going to be my best bet of the day. And we, I mean, we've spoken about 
this particular day of next week um <laughs> And for me, it's a day that I'm going to go and play golf and then mm-hmm. watch the racing in the afternoon with a, a couple of beers and just chill because I I don't like many pets. Um, but if Thomas Darby wins a 50 to 1, we might be doing the review show from the Barbados. The Barbados? You know what I mean. Anyway, <laughs> come on. <laughs> the Caribbean. The Caribbean, yeah. The, uh, what's, the <laughs> ho- what, what's the horse? I can't remember what it was. As me lighthouse. Me lighthouse. <laughs> yeah, we might. <laughs> right. Uh, we will see you in a few days for day four.